Um, how many calls a week do you get, and what kind of pitches do you get, and what would you rather hear than what you do hear when people are calling in? Do I, is this on? Yeah, it's on. Okay, yeah. great. Um, we get we get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, calls, requests. Actually, uh, very often j wine just shows up. People ship wine in, and uh, we don't really actually know much about it. Um, what we what we'd rather hear about is, uh, or, or rather know is what's behind that wine? Who, what's the winery? Who are the people behind it? What is the story? Um, and, and what is the expectations and goals of that winery? Uh, that would, those, those things are really important to us as we're evaluating what to take on and what not to take on. But is it about, one of the things we heard yesterday was about you know, the story, and, and Kendra's going to talk about storytelling and all that. Um, but is your first point of interest, uh, the way I like to say it is, when I pitch something to a retailer, their first question to me is, okay, if I'm going to put yours in, I got to take something out. And I know what the one that I'm going to take out is selling. How do I know what you're going to do? How do they convince you that they have a legitimate business opportunity for you? Well, that, that varies based on uh, what it is that they're presenting. If they're presenting an established wine in the market already, which does happen, um, then it's based on the facts, right? How, how is that wine already selling? Is, is, is it on-premise? Has it been placed? Is it, in, is it in the retail channel? What kind of volume does it have? Um, you can't hide from those numbers, really. Um, if it does not, and that's really where it gets uh, a little bit more difficult, um, we're looking at things like press, um, the competitive position of the wine. Is it in a segment that is a growing segment? Is it in a segment that's e extremely um, crowded right now? Uh, how is that wine priced? Um, is, is the wine priced effectively in the market? Um, and uh, and, and what, are, what are the various things that you can do to change uh, those factors if they're not going in the direction that you'd like them to go into right now? Would either of you like to comment on that? Sure. I know you would. Uh, as, a, as an importer, so we don't have a, a real active distribution arm in the United States, uh, we have a pretty focused approach on the categories we work with. So um, we do not duplicate a lot uh, producers from categories um, because we have a sales team that needs to go sell it to 50 states, 50 times, I think it's been said today earlier. Um, part of the approach is, is dual. Um, we certainly look at data. There are categories that are hot that we want to be in, that we're looking for products. Uh, to cover those categories. There is also categories that are emerging and we cannot be blind to the fact that something that exists today in a 8 million case category didn't exist 20 years ago. So we need to plan for the future. Uh, and we do that very carefully. So data is something that we do look at, but the other aspect is very personal. Uh, we talk to the people behind the brands, we become familiar with what they do, who they are, and start establishing what are the values of that brand. Is, that, is there a unique point of difference, a selling pitch? Um, who are the individuals? Are they press worthy? Can I bring those individuals to the market and meet the press? How's their English? Uh, have they accomplished anything in their native, uh, in their domestic markets? So that's typically a good indication for us. And it becomes a very collaborative effort of what can we get from that producer and what can we provide as far as expertise from our side. Okay. A uh, question for, oh, go ahead if you want to comment on that. Uh, I was gonna... Steve, I was just going to say, um, first, uh, I was here yesterday, and obviously uh, the, the audience and the exhibitors, uh, much more wine and spirits than, uh, than beer. I'm, I'm obviously a beer guy with Constellation, but you probably heard this, so everybody knows that it takes a lot of great beer to make great wine and great spirits. So I feel I have some relevance here with, with, with everybody. Um, I would just like to say, and again, this perspective is coming from, uh, but I think it, it, it uh, is germane to the entire industry, but coming from a beer perspective. And we started as a, I've had the opportunity with Constellation as a very small company. We're a brewer and an importer uh, in our position on the beer side. We started as a very small company. We've grown into a much larger company. We're the third largest beer company now. But one of the, the filters that we look at is uh, uh, with brands and companies that approach us. And there's nothing wrong. There's uh, talking about margin and money is not a dirty word. We want it to be good, obviously, for the brand owner. 
uh, if we are representing a brand in an agency relationship, what the margin is, the money that we're making uh, together. Also, relative to growth, we don't look for, as, as we've evolved, we don't look for growth that is, we have to have big growth immediately. But we do want to sit down and see what's going to happen over a three to five year period. So we do have a horizon to look at that we think is fair. And I think uh, John Baudet mentioned that this morning in, in his presentation. So we look at that. We look at high-end premium segment. The way the industry is going in the United States, certainly in the beer industry, and I think across all segments, is to the high end much more. Uh, it, it's going to continue to grow. So we certainly want to look for brands and partners that want to play and participate in, uh, in that area. Another area is white space. So we have a portfolio of brands that we've worked hard to build over the years. So somebody approaches us with a portfolio of brands or one brand. Is that brand going to complement our portfolio? Is it something that is going to fill a void that we don't have, that our distributors don't have, and, and the retailers. So that, that is important to us. Ease of execution, when we bring in a partner, how difficult is it going to, uh, or challenges are we going to face with? Uh, shipping, shipping the product around the United States, bringing in the product from, uh, from Europe or South America relative to uh, warehousing and getting it to our, our uh, distributors. And last but not least, certainly is, uh, is the investment, the investment in people, the investment in your brands. You're the brand owner, so you have to have uh, a reasonable investment behind that brand. But also, again, I re reference what I heard this morning. It takes marketing and it takes feet on the street. It takes people. So we look at all those different areas when we sit down to talk uh, to, to speak with someone about moving forward, establishing a relationship, and uh, going forward. We feel that those areas are extremely important.